So before we get started with our problem today, I want to announce that we've got a calculus live stream upcoming. And so that's to kind of christen my new studio, which is almost done. So I think that's going to happen the Saturday after next. But when I get the details firmly in place, I'll make sure to make a community post and announce it in a couple of videos. So the plan is to teach an entire Calculus 2 class from start to finish without stopping. So the problem today that I've got is from my favorite calculus book written by Spivak. So we want to suppose that we have a function so that its second derivative is continuous. So that when we evaluate that function at pi, we get 1. And then when we take the definite integral from 0 to pi of that function plus its second derivative times sine, we get 2. And then our goal is to find that function evaluated at 0. I think some hints built into the writing of this problem that would help us find a solution are the fact that we've got the derivative of a function here inside of an integral. And we've also got a sine function which changes into cosine when you take a derivative or an integral and changes back into sine when you take another derivative or an integral. Of course, there's a SIG in there as needed. And so those kind of things put together tell us that probably we need to use integration by parts. And that's exactly what we'll do. So let's start with this condition. I'm going to write it as 2 equals the integral from 0 to pi of f of x times sine x dx plus the integral from 0 to pi of f double prime of x times sine of x dx. So we can split that up because we know everything's continuous. So these are not improper integrals or anything. And now we're going to apply integration by parts to my second integral. So I will think about this sine x playing the role of u and then this f double prime of x dx playing the role of dv. So that tells us that du will be cos x dx and then v will be f prime of x. Again, that's just kind of setting up the integration by parts. And now applying the integration by parts formula to the second integral, leaving the first as is, we'll have the integral from 0 to pi of f of x times sine of x plus u times v. So that's going to be f prime of x times sine of x. We need to evaluate that from x equals 0 to x equals pi minus the integral of v du. So that's going to be minus the integral from 0 to pi of f prime of x times cosine of x dx. Now notice that this bit which has been evaluated will just turn into 0 because sine of pi is 0 and sine of 0 is 0. So let's take this and we can notice that all of this stuff just turns into 0. And then we've got another integral which looks kind of like the one that we started with, but we have a first derivative instead of a second derivative. But that really motivates the use of integration by parts one more time. So let's maybe let u equal this cosine of x term, and then we'll let dv be everything left over. So that tells us that du is minus sine of x dx, and then v is just equal to f of x. Antiderivative of f prime is f. So let's see what that'll leave us with. Now we've got this brought down. That's the integral from 0 to pi of f of x times sine of x dx minus all of this stuff which we're calculating with integration by parts. So it's going to be minus v times u. So that is f of x times cosine of x evaluated from x equals 0 up to pi. And then we have minus the integral of v du. But that's going to be minus the integral from 0 to pi of f of x times negative sine of x. But we can take this minus and this minus and cancel them. And we're left with f of x times sine of x dx. So now we see that we have the integral from 0 to pi of f of x sine x minus all of this stuff. But notice this stuff includes this integral which is outside. 
and with the opposite sign. So that means that this guy right here can cancel this guy right here after distributing that minus sign. Then I'll take this minus sign and use it to swap the bounds of, of evaluation. So that's a standard trick. So that'll give me f of x times cos x evaluated the top at zero and the bottom at pi. Now let's bring this two down and notice that we've created an equation which is everything that we need in order to find f of zero. So let's do that. So notice that this is f of zero times cosine of zero, but cosine of zero is one, minus f of pi times cosine of pi, but we know f of pi is one and cosine of pi is in fact equal to negative one. So that means we've got a plus one here. So let's just reiterate that this guy right here is minus f of pi times cosine of pi, where we use the fact that cosine of pi is minus one. But let's see what we've got. We've got two is equal to f of zero plus one, but that pretty quickly tells us that f of zero is equal to one. And that's a good place to stop.